So again, the question is asking us, how can we tell the difference between these with mass spec? Yeah, so okay. we look for their, again. So you're doing the McLafferty rearrangement again? So yeah, again, the alpha cleavage won't help because they would both have fragments, I guess. Well, actually, a single alpha cleavage wouldn't even change the mass. A single alpha cleavage would still be a connected molecule. So the alpha cleavage isn't going to help us very much. So we're doing the McLafferty rearrangement. Here you have two betas and two gamma. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. So point to the gamma curves. For this one, there's one here and one here. Right. So we've got alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma. So which beta hydrogen, which, which hydrogen is going to get taken in the McLafferty rearrangement? Um, I was saying the one at the end. This one? Yeah. That's right. Why, why, why can't we take this one? Because the H would not be able to go closer to that. They'd probably be... Yeah, that's a good analysis. Um, this hydrogen can't bend around to get close to the oxygen. But this chain over here can bend around. Especially we can bend this. Free rotation. That's right. We've got free rotation there. That's a good way to put that. So this can bend around to get close to the oxygen. I think we saw a couple times last term that rings introduce rigidity. Rings introduce rigidity, and there's no way that the gamma hydrogen over here can bend around to get close to this oxygen. But here we have a portion of the straight chain. So that's part of the problem here to notice which gamma hydrogen we're going to be taking. And then you have to show what we would get from the Glapagy rearrangement. Bond on the bottom one or no? You're right, I made a mistake. Thanks. That's right, I was missing this double bond. Mm here, wouldn't you not be able, you just wouldn't use the heavier piece, right? Like, wouldn't you use these smaller pieces instead? But whenever they do it, they only use, because these two are the same. Um, they never, these wouldn't show up because they're neutral. Oh, so that's right. I left out this guy over here. That's right. So I should, yeah, yeah I should keep Down that there, in. You should add one next to it, yeah. Right. Okay, that makes sense. I see that. However, even though there is another carbon here, this is not the carbon that's going to lose its proton. Because this is what, what comes after gamma, alpha, beta, gamma. This is the delta carbon. Well, we don't want to take the proton right, from the delta. Just to draw the right. Oh, no, yeah, you're absolutely right. I made a mistake before. So I should have, uh, so there we got. Alpha. And what I was telling you is like, they didn't ever charge. They didn't ever charge. So he's going to come up saying, right now they have a Cool. Okay, so the big thing here that we saw here is to actually label the alpha, beta, and the gamma carbons. Um, I'm actually a little surprised that the McLafferty rearrangement works here. I'm a little surprised that the proton can get close enough to this oxygen. It doesn't seem to have that much flexibility. But let's check the answers for that and make sure it can really do what Ah, 
So actually, how's accessible? So this whole business here was uh, was a red herring. This whole business, like, yeah. So the second thing, so the first thing I did was wrong, and the second thing I said was right. This actually, you can kind of see just from the picture. Notice that this hydrogen really is a long way away from this oxygen. It can't really get very close to this oxygen over here. If we were going to take this hydrogen, that might work, but this can't get close enough. So does that make any sense? Yeah, so then what happens? Well, this just won't do on the Clafferty rearrangement. So you will just look for that one because that one yeah. will just have alpha cleavage. Yeah, if you see a fragment with this size, it seems like it came from a Clafferty rearrangement and it must be the left-hand compound. Mm -hmm. This one really, so we, we tried to do a McLafferty rearrangement here, but there, there really is no way to, to bend to get this hydrogen close enough to the oxygen. This is about as close as it can get, and it's not very close. So this was all a bit of a mistake. This hydrogen just can't get close enough to the oxygen. So it looks like one, that was kind of a theme from the previous question, too, where we saw that only one of the gamma hydrocarbons could get close enough. Notice that here we could really twist this carbon chain so that the hydrogen got very close to the carbonyl oxygen. That just looks like one of the themes you have to watch out for in the McLafferty rearrangement. The McLafferty rearrangement only works if the molecule has sufficient flexibility for the gamma hydrogen to twist around to be close to the carbonyl oxygen. You can only get a McLafferty rearrangement if there's enough flexibility for the gamma hydrogen to get uh, close to the alpha car to the uh, carbonyl oxygen. 